now with Jay Tronius on Gavin with the Governor, man. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Thank you, my brother. Peace. Peace to you, man. It was good. All right. Without further ado, let's let the world in on you, man. Who are you? Uh, where are you? And what are you about? Hey, listen. What up, man? Pleasure to be here. Gavin with the Governor. My name is Singh. Originally from Philly. Um, still living up here in Boston. I'm, I'm about this music thing, man. About this music thing. I've uh, been rocking for a very long time doing music, all different kinds with different people. Um, and, and now just, just here, still doing more of the same. You know what I mean? I can dig it, man. So start us from the beginning, man. What brought you, what, what was your uh, your journey, man? What started you in the music? And where where is it bringing you now? Where is it now? Man, all right. Well, the the start with the music, you know, came as a youngin, as as most of us, you know, just got got hit by the musical punch, bit by the bug, and, and been rocking ever since, man. I, coming up in Philly, soulful place, man. You already know what Philly's all about, you know. So um, I got into music um, by first of all by watching, you know, Michael Jackson. That was like my first major influence into music. You know what I mean? Michael Jackson, and I had a bunch of Michael Jackson records, had a, a young MC record, um, was into a lot of, you know, music in that, that time. So like early 90s, it was just really, really pressing, really good stuff, man. And um, from there, you know, I got into playing keys a little bit, started playing piano for my church, um, started singing in the church, and then from there, started singing at school a little bit, right? And when I was singing at school, Little girls in class were like, oh, he can sing. Oh my God. Oh, I'm like, oh yeah. I'm looking at them like, okay, so this singing thing is good for the soul, but it's good for other things too. <laughs> you better I mean, believe look, it. You better believe it. Something. They're catching the vapors out here. So from there, I mean, I realized the impact of music very early, you know what I mean? And how it can like make people feel things. So then I went on to the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts. You know, um, boys and men were had become longtime idols. You know, around that time for me, so I was doing a lot of groups. Went to Kappa, you know, for the for the high school. Then went to Berkeley, um, where we met. I man, yeah, listen. Man. <laughs> and I want I want to go in a little more about that whole experience, about our connection and everything. But um, from there, once I got out of Berkeley, uh, I was a part of the group Amir for a number of years, 15 years together, you know, making wow, music. Wow, you know. wow. Yes, yes, very long time, man. And, um, you know, with them, we got to got to travel a lot, got to connect with a lot of people and put out a lot of cover music for people. And now I figured it was time for, for me to go back to my roots and bring back stuff that otherwise had been buried, you know, because I was doing so much music in one, one lane for so long, I kind of, left myself behind a little bit yeah so i got back to my basics got back to my roots and, and came up with with where i am now about to release this ep dirty truth man listen you and, and, and we can go ahead and segue man because you and i both know what the dirty truth means to me so yeah. so so bust yeah. that out for him, man T tell them a little bit about our first our first run-ins with each other now, our first run-ins with each other came came by way of JT, Sir J. Tronius himself. Okay, J. Tronius! All right. <laughs> okay, JT and the Dirty Truth, man. That was it. Yeah. JT and the Dirty Truth. I was a part of that Dirty Truth, man. Me and a couple homies, background singing, and, and we were making people feel something. Man. Yeah, sir. Yeah, people, sir. People came to, to your show to feel something. You know what I mean? And I was I was a young boy, man. I came up to Boston, hadn't really met too many people yet. Took a liking to me, man. You took me right under your wing, bro. And was like, hey, this is what we're doing. He said, hey, man, let me tell you something, player. This is what we're doing, man. This is what we all about. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make you feel something. You dig what I'm saying? Like, you had that talk, man. I said, I got to be a part of this. I got to be a part of this. Yeah, you know? man. And so we know, and then we take that into full circle, man. Like. You know, I, I've always been good. Like, first of all, you know, I studied the greats, man. You know, so it's like, when you're saying that to me, what's flashing in my head is, you know, when when uh, when James Brown found Bootsy or or when, yes. Uh, yes. you know, these other cats that coach, you know, Maurice Fine and Philip Bailey, you know, all these uh -huh. different scenarios. So to me, I was not just about my artistry, but I also have always been intrigued 
with seeing who else is out there and who's on the come up. Because a co-sign yeah. is very important. A co-sign yes. for all of us by the right people can go a long way, man. So I always try to incorporate that with what I'm doing, not just so it's about me. Even with this show, it's about me showing the world these amazing people that I believe in and who I've crossed paths with. So the, and I believe the rest of the world needs to run into them as well. Word, so my brother. That's part of the thing, man. So and of course, you know, yeah, that that was at the time, that was my, my first coming out. You were a part of me coming out as a solo artist. And that's what mm. JT and the Dirty Truth was all about, was me stepping out and being like, this is my voice. So yes. full circle now, as you got this uh, new project coming out called The Dirty Truth, it's hitting me, you know, it's hitting yes. me some okay. kind of yeah. way. And tell us about that. Tell us about your Dirty Truth EP coming out. Well, the, the Dirty Truth EP, I mean, much like, like what you said, how that was your way of, of presenting your music, you know, your original music to the world. It's basically the same approach, man. You know, so I came to, like your, your first project, your first full project is always a culmination of what you've been working on your whole life. You know what I mean? And so the reason why, you know, I came to Dirty Truth was because as I mentioned, um, a lot of things were buried, you know, for a long time. A lot of, a lot of music that I liked, um, a lot of things that I was feeling, fantasies, dreams, inspirations. It was all kind of taking a back seat to the other music that I was doing at the time. Um, I call it Dirty Truth because, you know, some of the topics are a little racy to talk about. You know, some of it may be even taboo to talk about. Uh, but I feel like it's my platform, it's my Dirty Truth, and if you rock with it, great. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. But I'm just putting out something that, that I'm hoping people can feel. You know what I mean? So, uh, and what is the release date of that? Do you have an exact release date for that project? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. April 24th, 2020, baby. That's it. So, 4-24-2020, y'all. Right. Y'all y'all look out for that, man. The Dirty Troop EP. Now, tell me, man. Give me some history on your name, on your alias. How did you come up with your alias? What what inspired that? Man, so I'm a, I'm a part of the uh, legendary, awesome fraternity called Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. And there was one time we were going down to take a road trip. We were, we were driving down to Atlanta. And a lot of brothers and the, a couple of the guys we were with had these dope aliases, man. Dope nicknames, whatever. And, you know, mine was Mark. My name was Mark. It's lame. You know, everybody's going around, like, dropping these cool names, whatever. And they're like, yo, well, you sing. So we could just call you Sing, Sing, uh, Sing, Sing. I was like, all right. I like how that sounds. So going on with Sing, Sing, um, that became my name in the fraternity. Everybody calls me Sing Sing. And I just took that right over to my dealings with the group, Amir, that I was a part of. You know, so then that really kind of solidified, you know, being called Sing Sing. Now, some people look at it like, you know, well, that was, uh, that's a prison in upstate New York. You know, I'm going to say State something, State. but yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. So, so, like, what's the deal with that? Like, you did some time, brother, whatever? I said, no, nah, I ain't, I ain't do no time. I do no time. Actually, one of, one of my frat brother's homies uh, from New York, I believe, we were all chilling one day, and you know, everybody's like introducing themselves, dropping their cool names, or whatever. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? I'm, I'm Sing Sing. He looked at me and was like, Sing Sing? You ain't never been to Sing Sing. I was like, you're exactly right, my friend. I have never been to Sing Sing, never done any time whatsoever, but whatever. So it was Sing Sing, and then as a part of the solo mission, I just figured to drop one of the Sings and just leave it at sin. So that's how I came. And brother, you know, from day one, one thing you definitely do is you don't sing, you sing, brother. You got, hey. you got an amazing voice, man. And, and I, I, even when I met you in, in your younger years, man, you and you, you just came out there and did your thing, man. Full, full of soul, repping Philly to the fullest, man. Now mm -hmm. tell me something, man. Because you come from Philly and now you're in Boston, as, as we're in the now, what made you choose to stay in Boston over going back to Philly? Mm. Um, well, I, I always loved Philly. Philly has like a, a huge place in my heart as my home. Um, but when I came up to Boston, the thing that really kept me here was my dealings with the group. You know what I mean? So most of the guys um, had already, you know, they came to Boston. One member was from Boston, the other two, um, one from Harlem, one from Rochester, New York. And they'd already made plans to kind of be in Boston for a while. So if I was going to be a part of this group, I needed to stay. You know what I mean? So I stayed. I stayed and stuck around. And, you know, I do think there were, you know, definitely better opportunities probably somewhere else. 
you know, um, for, for some time we were even thinking like, man, maybe we should like leave, maybe we should go somewhere like Atlanta or any other city where R&B music is a bit more prevalent, you know, yeah. or there's more of a music scene. Um, for what we're trying to do. But we decided, you know, with, with YouTube becoming really big, like, hey, we can touch and reach a lot of people right from the internet. We don't have to necessarily be anywhere. Um, so we adopted that idea, which which led to me staying in Boston, you know, for, for all this time. Right on. Now, you know, with, with that group, uh, do y'all still, are, do y'all still plan to make any more records or, or is, is that, that chapter completely ended? Because it's interesting, man, because I knew all of y'all separately outside of the group and then y'all got together uh, oh okay okay you know with Le with leon and, and and big mike like we literally sure. used to do shows together even before <laughs> i met you you know so it was okay. interesting that we all were kind of in a similar circuit and then all of y'all getting together i was like wow that's, that's, that's a team of some bad <laughs> brothers dog y'all all had your own thing and then y'all joined forces man uh do y'all ever plan to to make records further or, or, or is the mere chapter is, is it is what it is now, I believe that chapter, as far as my involvement, you know, with the group, I mean, I've, I've officially broken off to do my own thing. Yeah. Uh, I know the guys have still released um, a few more things after my departure. Uh, not really sure, you know, what the overall plan is for them going forward. I do hope they continue to, to still make music, you know, because we, we had a, a huge presence overseas, man. Yeah. You know, Europe and especially in a lot of Asian countries too. Like a lot of a lot of projects that were released exclusively out there. Yeah. You know? So hopefully, you know, there's still a lane for them to continue what they're doing. But um, I, I'm I'm rocking this solo mission, man. Yeah, I'm ready to to really see where where I can go with with my my original music and my voice. You know. So you uh, you're doing the band thing, of course, that I see. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, what, yep. now, now, why why do you personally? Uh, prefer a band over tracks? Mm. That's a really good question, man. Um, because a lot of my musical experiences up to this point was very track driven. You know, so when we did shows, we had backing tracks. When we did recording studios, uh, recording sessions, it was with tracks that someone had created. If someone asked me to write a song for them, they're sending me a track to do it. You know, like, oh, this is the track. We wanted to kind of stay like this, write something in this. Tracks kind of boxed me in a little more than I like to be, you know? So I figured with with instrumentation, like with the band, you can, you can start off writing the song with all the freedom that you want, you know, and then add tracks, track elements later, other production things later. Um, I'm not the greatest, like, tracking producer myself. Um, so my create, creation of songs starts with actual instruments. So either with the keyboard, with my bass, with the guitar. And from there, I build the song and then just have bring the, bring the guys in to play on it, have someone else add production later. That's just yeah. the way I prefer to, to kind of roll with it. But I just love the feel of live instruments anyway. It's you know? powerful, man. It's a lot of electricity. Yeah, I got it. Man. I got to have it. I it's a it. lot of electricity, man. Now I sing. So you picked up what? What else besides singing? What instruments do you play? So it's um primarily um, keys, bass, and I'm working on that that electric guitar now. I'm working on it, man. It's it's a journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Keys was my was my first instrument, but bass is very quickly becoming like my primary. Yeah. The bass, you said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, man. you know, those, those two, man, the bass and the guitar, so you know me just from my sound, they're, they're so important to me, man. You know, I yeah. tell everybody, you know, I tell every bass player, if you can't bring that funk and you can't dookie slide, you can't ride. <laughs> okay. You know, that, that's what I tell them. I'm like, bro, if you don't tell, if you don't make me make that ugly stank face, right, but you can't you can't fuck with me. I, I'm that's sorry, it. you can't. That's it. Man, I can no dig man. it, man. I can dig it. And my band, man, it, it's some bad boys, man. They're all bad, man. I um this dude, Jordan Carter's the drummer. He's super killing. I met him because he filled in for another band I was a part of once. And and when he played with us that, that one time, I said to him, We're gonna work together, man. We're gonna work. And here we are years later, crushing it. My um my guitarist. He's primarily like a rock guitarist, rock, metal, all of that. That, that, that really just <laughs> brings the sound to the next level, man. Yeah. Super killing, super killing. 
And uh, bass player working with a couple bass players right now too. Also just just killing it, man. Everybody's like firing on, on what they do. Man, that's amazing. So as of right now, you know, you can tell we're being in Boston. You got a badass band. You're pushing out content. You know, um, I'm asking this question to everybody, man. At Come the end with. of the day, when it's all said and done, man, when when when, it, when it's time to go, go on to the other dimension, mm -hmm. what is the same legacy? What do you want to leave this world behind when it's all said and done? I want to. Well, obviously, I want to. I want to leave behind this music, but I want people to uh, people who have heard this music to say that you know he really did what he wanted to do with his music and with his time here. You know what I mean? So as far as like just, just being free with expression, not really, you know, following too many rules about how you're supposed to make music. You know, I, I've, I've done that, I've lived that life, and I'm, I'm done with that, you know? So when people think of sing, I want, I want sing to be its own genre. You know what I'm talking about? So when you talk about what kind of music does Prince, did Prince make? I don't know, it's just Prince. You know what yep. I mean? It's yep. just Prince, you know what I mean? What kind of music did Michael Jackson make? He made a lot of different kind of music, but it's just MJ, you know what I mean? Mike is Mike, yo. That's it, That's, it's just that. Like, so I, I've, I've coined the saying, some sing shit. It's just this, what's this song? It's some sing shit, you know what I mean? That's what it is. Yeah. You know, that's what I want to leave behind. I dig it, man, I dig it. And, you, and you're well on your way to doing that, man. It's, it's, it's been cool. I've been blessed to actually literally see your journey from from the jump, man. And like, and, man. I'm, and I'm glad to be a part of that and watch that evolve over time. Both of us actually have got to watch each other, man. And it's, sure. and it's been wild, man. Now, how do people get get to listen to your music? Tell them your social media links and whatnot. How, how do they get to check you out? Man, well, here's the thing. My social media, all of it, all you have to type in is, it's the real thing. So all of that, even the it's. So you go, it's the real thing. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. You can find me right there. Uh, for my music, my music is everywhere as well. So so far, all the streaming platforms have it. Um, the EP will be on all streaming platforms. And depending on when y'all hear this, I'll have the links. Um, I have a link in my Instagram bio right now um, where you can pre-order the EP and get the song Only You instantly. So that song is... It, that's yours if you copy right now. But then that link, you know, once the, the EP goes live, that link will be there for you to, you know, hear the whole thing. All right, so only you to get, dig into this first single that is available off the EP. What what is only you about? What what's the inspiration and what is it about? Man, so it only you. I call that the dirtiest of the dirty truth. Mm. Okay. So that one, that song is about basically you you, you come into contact with a female. You know, and you just already know that it's on. You know, so it starts off four or five in the morning. Maybe we can go somewhere. I can feel your rain and it's pouring, but I want to taste you instead. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay. So, I mean, and that's that's the opening lyrics of the song. Yeah. You know? So the song is really just about you know everybody knows what they want in life. Let's just go after it and go get it. Okay. Let's stop, all, let's stop all the. Let's not play no games. Let's cut to the chase. Let's just get to it, baby. Let's oh, just... man. I look forward to hearing this EP, man. And, and one more thing, too, fam. Your message to the youth. When someone that's starting out in your similar lane or anybody trying to start out their dream, what's some advice you give to the youth and other people out? All you need to do is what feels right to you. That is it. That is it. A lot of people will have a lot to say. A lot of people have their own opinions about what you're doing. And a lot of people will project on you negativity that was given to them. You know, so even though that there may be another musician that you're working with and they're like, yeah, well, you know, I went and did that before. You know, I don't think you should do that because it didn't work for me. Well, that was you. You know what I'm saying? So you can take everything people say to you with a grain of salt, but at the end of the day, you will be the happiest when you follow what you believe your lane is and there's no traffic in your own lane you feel me major fact. No traffic in your own lane so just do what you do best and 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 trust in yourself bet on you man amazing amazing and you know man. i'm all about marching to my own drum i always yes, have been always yeah. will be man and like i said it's so great to see you just become who you become and I wish you all the best as you continue on. 
they know how to get in touch with you. I'm gonna put it in the description, brother. Yes, infinite blessings and strength and 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 you know success and all that you do. You know what I'm saying? And keep on, keep yeah. on, man. The show must go on. Rock and roll, cat daddy. You it know what it is. It has to all day, every day, family. Hey, man, y'all. This is Jay Tronius. You're getting with the governor. This was Sing, Boston based, amazing musician with no boundaries. Y'all be good. Make sure to check his music out. Peace, love, and light, man. Y'all stay positive and do your own damn thing. You okay. did. <laughs> yeah. All right, peace, family. Love talking with you, man. Yes, sir.